Welcome back to Parse of Some Parsimony. Back in May, I did some experimenting with this set of garden beds with companion planting, with cabbage, onions, celery, and parsley. And I wanna show you guys what it looks like after it's been a month and if I would do anything differently if I did this again. If you are new here, welcome. My husband and I live on a third of an acre in a suburban setting and yes, you hear our chickens going crazy. We just try to do whatever we, we try to grow whatever we can on the little bit of land we have here. So without further ado, let me show you how things are going. This is my first season using these type of hoops with the bug netting. I have issues with rabbits that like to live in this hedge line here. And we just, I do not want all of my, all my brassicas and all my plants to get eaten. So I ended up trying this system and I cannot recommend it enough. It has worked great for keeping the cabbage moths out, but as well as the rabbits and the smaller rodents. So in this first bed here, it's probably four by two, maybe four by two and a half here. I started out with kitty quartering two cabbage plants and interplanting onions in this space here and the marigolds in this space here. I did plant a marigold over here for the whole row, but you can see the cabbage is actually just overshadowing it. So it's not, unless this speeds up, it's going to get overtaken by shade from the cabbage plant. So one thing I've learned from doing this is you've got to give your cabbage plants or the brassicas enough room because they are going to spread really wide. So here, this worked really well in the spacing in between. Like again, I did the kitty corner plants here with lettuce here. And then in this corner, I did some onion and celery and that's been fine. That's worked really, really well. Then going to the next section, I've tried something different. I decided instead of just doing two plants, kitty corner, I did four plants. Again, onions here and lettuce in the middle. And you can see what's happened is these cabbages have grown together and pretty much shaded out all of the plants, which some shading is fine, but this lettuce is trying to get more sunlight and so it's really pushing up on the leaves. So that was not such a good plan. If I'm gonna do the companion planting again, I think I would only put the two plants and then leave the other two plants out and put in the onions and the lettuce and things like that in those two spaces there. Right next to, in that same bed, I tried putting in broccoli plants. And I did three broccoli plants in that same amount of area. <laughs> and the lettuce I put in the middle. You can see how much taller the broccoli is over the cabbage and it has just really shaded the lettuce again the lettuce is getting very uh, stringy trying to reach for the sunlight because the cabbage leaves are just taking over everything that being said the plants are doing phenomenal they seem very happy with their companions that I've planted with them the companion plants are the ones that seem to be suffering a little bit just because the broccoli and the cabbage just are so big not complaining they're healthy plants just for companion planting purposes I need to do a better job spacing the plants out so we don't have that competition and that shading to the same extent. Again, I did the same thing. Four cabbages here, six broccolis. These broccolis have a little bit more shade just because of the way the hedge line is. You can see they're not quite as tall and the lettuce is growing beautifully in the smaller plants. So maybe it's just a timing thing. Maybe the lettuce should go in a week before the broccoli. So it gives this time the lettuce to fully harvest before these guys get too big and shade them out I'm not sure those are probably things I would have to experiment with another time but there is some volunteer dill that grew in this bed and nobody seems to be complaining they all seem very happy and very healthy moving on to some more experiments with companion planting these peppers I have jalapeno and bell peppers right here I did some reading online and some people swore that planting your onions next 
to your peppers was one of the best things you could do for them. And I will say they have thrived here, even though they don't get as much sun as I think they would like, they are thriving next to the peppers. Moving to another section of the garden here, I have just onions in this bed along with a strawberry plant and a really tiny pepper plant. That pepper plant's not enough to affect these onions currently. And I would say these were planted two weeks earlier than the other ones. They're at the same size, but these were planted longer. Preliminarily, I would say the peppers and the onions seem to be very happy companions. And it was a great way for me to get all my onions planted. I have smaller baby peppers and again onions in here and these guys are still getting started. Onions are doing well but not nearly to the extent as the bigger peppers. So a couple takeaways I have for companion planting is number one, think about how big your mature plants are going to get and try to plan your companion plants around that because I still did not give enough room to my cabbage and my broccoli with the lettuce and the onions. Lesson learned, note to self, give, your, give yourself more space. My second takeaway is if you can get your hands on some of these hoops and the bug netting, definitely do it. Your local hardware store should have whatever you need. Amazon has it. I have links to everything that I'm personally using. I've been very happy with it. I'll leave that down in the description if you can't find it anywhere local. But it keeps the cabbage moths out so you don't get the cabbage worms, which makes just the plants look that much healthier. They are healthier and then you don't have to fight the worms when you harvest your broccoli and your cabbage and all of that. To me, that's valuable. And the netting that I've gotten is, this is on its second season. It's holding up beautifully. And again, hands down, one of the best things I've added to my garden. Lastly, I would invest into natural control for pests i.e. slugs. Slugs are something that we have to deal with and I would assume most everyone has to deal with them as well. I have a product that I got off of Amazon and I used it last year. I used it the year before. It's all natural. It works like a charm. If you don't want to invest into that because it is a little pricey, if you can get your hands on some old beer, put it in a tuna fish can and lay it in the soil, it will take care of all of your slug problems. So I hope this video has been helpful to you. I'd love to hear how you do some of your companion planting with your peppers, your onions, and all the brassica plants. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to follow me over on Instagram where you see more of my day-to-day -day gardening, and we'll see you for our next video. Bye. Every once in a while, you'll find some special treats in the garden. And in this case, we found 13 swallowtail caterpillars. So we are going to enjoy watching them, feeding them, and we're gonna enjoy watching them turn into butterflies. Look at those guys, they're huge. They're like so all one, over the two, place. Three, four, five. Don't squish this guy up here. That's a here. different type right there. No, he just hasn't split his skin. He's gonna lose his skin soon. <laughs> cool.